Hello, this is Leisha Holmes of Key Recruitment, and I'm absolutely thrilled today to be joined by Helen Clayton, who is a partner at PM&M Accountancy Practice, and also Chair of Trustees at the Met. Welcome to you today, Helen. Thanks, Leisha. Good to be here. Oh, it's wonderful for you to be here. So for those of you in our audience who aren't familiar with what your business is doing, what you, your role is, can you give us an overview, please? Of course I can. So, um, Helen... Uh, partner at pm and uh, firm of accountants, corporate financiers and wealth management advisors. So I'm a part owner in our business, which makes it really my baby. Um, and I'm responsible for a client portfolio, which is a, a mix of sort of privately owned owner managed businesses. But also internally, I've got leadership and management responsibilities, primarily around our team and our people and their learning and development. And that that's really my passion. Oh, that's wonderful. And do you want to tell us a little bit about the Met as well, your role with that? Yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely love being involved in the Met. I mean, it's so, such a challenge at the moment because it's not really open, in, in, you know, in the way that it should be. Um, and, you know, is, is really a great flagship for Berry and, and culture and the community. So it, we're facing challenges, but, you know, we're getting through them and we're starting to open it up more and more to, to different small groups, obviously, or all risk assessment done, social distancing, everything like that. So step by step, we're starting to see some, some new things happening, which is great. But the team back at the Met have been absolutely fantastic throughout the whole of the COVID experience. Right. Um, really positive, um, thinking of new ways to do things. And I think, you know, that's great for Barry. Really great. So if people want to get involved in terms of, because you, you're often sharing things like sponsorship links and we'll, we'll share links. If, if people want to know more about the Met, it's a wonderful venue in Barry. Uh, lots of gigs, lots of lots of shows over the years. And obviously they're also one of the sponsors of the Ramsbottom Music Festival, Head for the Hills too, which yeah. everyone's sorely missed this year so thank you for that introduction so I, I love I mean obviously one of the main reasons I wanted to invite you on today is to talk about um the prevalence of your um client base I guess with the fact that we're mainly SME um partners so our recruitment portfolio is you know small business recruitment business owners large large scale independents you know I'm sure a lot of our listeners are also are senior directors and managers who work in in large corporate recruitment companies but they'll all be thinking about the same thing with the latest changes that have happened this week which is sort of you know the the latest restrictions which we've been told will last for at least six months what would your advice be to business owners now to protect their finances going forward um i think holistically not going delving into numbers like you might expect an accountant to do but um the number one word i would use is communication okay so communication around your business with your fellow directors or shareholders but with the rest of the team, that's really, really crucial. But also with your customers, your suppliers, and keeping those communication channels open and being honest with each other around everything that's going on. Um, really, truly listening to the team as well. Because if you've got an engaged workforce, engaged team, they're contributing ideas, they're thinking about, well, how else can we do things differently? And that will all lend itself to um, supporting, you know, financial revenues, the bottom line, because you're not spending loads on replacing people, which isn't great in your line of business for recruitment, but you know, it's a costly exercise and you want people engaged giving their ideas. Um, so trying to retain those people and then hopefully recruiting alongside um, is a good thing to do. So communication is, is everything for me, but in terms of that financial stability, it's cash. Mm. It has to be cash. You can be reporting profits, but hemorrhage, hemorrhaging cash. Um, so, you know, if you want to understand why that is, then give me a shout. But um, yeah, cash is everything. Cash is going to be able to stand you in good stead for the longer term. It's going to be able to make you um, take hold of decisions, um, make decisions and opportunities that come along um, without cash. You know, you, you're going to find, you've got to go and try and find the cash. You've got to try and borrow it from somewhere. And yeah, there's, you know, there's opportunities out there from the banks. C-bills has just been extended to the end of the year. So there's more opportunities again. But um, yeah, cash, keep hold of it for loving the money. Yeah. Just keep going. There's a very, we'll definitely do a link back to, we have Greg Savage on um, our channel, who might not be familiar to yourself, but to our audience, he is a world renowned recruitment um, guru and he talks about cash is king all the time. So Absolutely. It what really is. Cash on. Good advice. Mm. 
Yeah. I think the other thing as well, it's not just cash for your business, mm. but look at your own financial position as, as individuals, okay. you know, whether that's um, you as a director of your own business or whether that's the employees in your business, helping them with financial wellness as well, because again, that keeps their engagement. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's your personal protection of, of any wealth, you know, whether that's five pound, five million pound, it's irrelevant. It's your wealth and protecting it and looking after it is really vital. And I think that's something that I've seen a real shift in a lot of um, what companies are talking about in terms of their branding and their values. You know, there's a lot more emphasis on things like mental well-being, but actually I have started to see a lot of companies share financial well-being. Yeah. So I think that again, that's, that's a real shift where it, employers are taking that ownership of the pastoral care of, of their employees, especially for younger people who maybe haven't got a clue how to, how are they going to get on the property ladder now? What are they supposed to do with this? You know, especially recruiters who earn, you know, they might earn a big chunk of commission, whereas previously they might go and blow it on a holiday. What are they going to do with it now? So that's yeah. really good advice, actually. Yeah. Keep hold of it. Good. Yeah. Keep hold of it. You know what might come up. Um, but yeah, think, thinking about, you know, wills, um, if you are a director, lasting powers of attorney as to who's, you know, if something happens to you, who's going to take on your business, you know, how you're going to generate, um, I guess, the payback from what you've built your business to be for your family that you, you may be leaving behind. So that retirement, the investment plan and everything like that is, you know, do it. Don't don't park it. Don't put it in the too difficult box. Yeah, you might not understand it, but find the person that can help you do that to outsource to somebody that understands wills and think looking at financial future planning okay yeah. Yeah, it's getting the paperwork in in order doing it. which is a nightmare for most but do it yeah definitely yes if you haven't yeah no that's really really good advice so so from that perspective you talked about cash is king so i mean it's not just going to sit there in the bank and especially if you're a business owner you know you've you've potentially used the furlough scheme which has been an absolute you know life set life you know saver for so many jobs so what should and again it's quite a generic question but what should people or what should business owners be investing in right now and maybe what should they avoid spending cash on okay so i'm going to take it back to people then Okay. So you should be investing in having the, the right bums on the right seats. Okay. Yeah. So skills, looking at skill gaps, you know, you may need to recruit and therefore, well, who, why, what for, Okay. Uh, making sure that that individual is going to drive even more value into your business. Um, you know, you may need to think about parting company with some people that don't share your vision. Yeah. Um, that goes back to communication then because if you're not communicating what your your vision will be different now everybody has to have adjusted what their values are and it's about continuing to you know have those people in place who it might not be that they're they're not right but they're wrong yeah. for, the, for the new vision going forward so make yeah. sure that right, right decision and then investing in the people in training development yeah. training you know, development yeah yeah um but i think also a phrase I've heard quite a lot recently is um, business owners, you've got to start, you've got to focus on the business, not in the business. Okay. So that's really about standing back. What is the vision? Where are you going? What are the strategic goals? Have you broken that down into the next six months, 12 months in a world where things are changing week by week? Yeah. You know, we weren't expecting the announcements um, yesterday about, sort of the new furlough scheme if you will mm. we weren't expecting that last week and and yet here it is this week so there's there's more opportunities not for everybody it doesn't work for everybody sadly but for a lot of businesses there will be new opportunities so being able to stand back from your business and understand what that means rather than being firefighting in the middle of it yeah. is, is really really going to help and then it adds to the clarity of communication around the team as well so a good business owner really should be um, a good, strong leader, but also have that sort of nimble approach because the thing is, ch things are changing constantly. Literally, yeah. we're sat here now, you know, it's Friday, we've had the announcement of the new restrictions, like you said, the new job support scheme, who knows what's around the corner next week, the, the next month, we just don't know. And a good business leader, if they're have got a vision and they, they're being objective and standing back, they're going to be able to make wiser decisions, but it comes back to having cash to do that. It does. It does. It's conserving the cash. But you know, if you take everybody with you on that journey and you're articulating what's going on and why, 
why changes in the business might need to happen and why I'm getting everybody's buy-in, the financials should follow. Okay. So I think, you know, if businesses are a bit leaner, they're probably more capable of doing that than aren't they? So maybe what should businesses not be spent? And again, it's very generic. So every, every company listening, you're going to have your own individual P&L, et cetera. But what would you say you should not spend cash on at the moment? It's the fancy stuff, isn't it? Really? Yeah. The, I mean, and they're probably not happening. So, you know, the travel and the going out for lunches and, you know, bobbing down to London or, or whatever it is your business would normally do is probably not happening right now and actually it's grabbing hold of that and saying and challenging it and say that's fine we're not allowed to do it now so we're not doing it but actually in a world where we are allowed to again are we going to go back to that or are we going to do something differently so it's not necessarily about what should you not spend now but what should you not spend in the future yeah. there's, there's so much you know we're on zoom now and there's so much that's either low cost or, or no cost social media for example where you can market build your brand talk communicate because yeah. um, you're not just talking to the outside world when you're on social media you're, you're also talking to your employees oh, sure. you're customers. Customers. yeah definitely it's funny isn't it because marketing tends to always be the first thing that gets cut but i think at the moment personally it should be where you're spending your cash what do you think about that yeah absolutely i think um, recession on recession the, the first thing to go has been the marketing budget but actually it, it's you know you might tweak it and you, but to me it's about spending it in different ways and it might not be a pound note spend it might be a time spend and I think that's the difference as well yeah no definitely that's really interesting that and I'm sure that anyone that's not here watching this who's in we have plenty of uh, followers who are marketing people they'll be shouting yay finally because I've never understood it to me you should be doing more of that now and investing more in your people now than ever before because they're the one they're the soldiers that are going to take you forward the people that are with you now if they're still with you now they're your they're your soldiers and your warriors to get you through to sort of the, whatever the next six months looks like that's yeah. really yeah in this world you know it's filled with negativity the press and everything like that and and the more positivity we can bring through and the more optimism and the more come on yeah. you know we're British, we can do this um I, th I think that's brilliant. Yeah. I think that's what people need around them is positivity. Oh God, absolutely, Helen. <laughs> well, this is we're positive towers. I think. I think I'm quite right. I think people think I'm on drugs or something. Um, so what? And I know you're not going to disclose clients or anything like that. But from what you can see, if if you are if, if so anybody watching this is an entrepreneur or has some that you know an eye, their eye on a different market to either recruit into, they they see this as an opportunity to pivot. Um, or there was an opportunity to invest some cash to, you know, have, reap the benefits. What sectors would you say are, are good ones for people to think about or markets for people to look at? That's a really tough question. Yeah. I think from what I'm seeing, there's no, I can't answer that in a way, because when I look at different sectors, there's all different things going on within those sectors. So, you know, we're based in Lancashire, Greater Manchester. We've got a lot of engineering, manufacturing type businesses, whether they're clients or, or just people that we know. And there's a real mix in there in terms of, yeah, these are happening. People are streamlining their businesses, but the same way they're making it more efficient. Yeah. So it's not necessarily all in automation. We don't need all these people anymore. There's a lot of businesses out there that do need that manual skilled labor. Yes. So it's about making it more efficient, the right people, right bums on right seats, all that kind of thing again. But then, you know, we've got people in the same kind of sectors that have pivoted, like you said, were supplying hospitality, now supplying NHS. So they've shifted their business and turnover's gone up. I've got another client who's in a declining industry and his turnover's grown by 25% this year. Wow. Absolutely phenomenal. That's incredible. Okay. That's, so, I mean, that's a rarity, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. And people ask me this question all the time because we recruit for the recruitment sector and we don't specialize in one market. We recruit for any recruitment sector there is. And we always have done and we always will. Um, and I think, you know, there is no, there is a definite pattern, I would say, 
it, the, you know, there are certain markets that are a bit more robust, for example, technology, because there's always going to, yeah. there's ever changing, it's, it's so diverse. Um, you know, for now, public sector is seen as relatively safe, but of course, once austerity comes in, which it will again, you know, that's then not a safe place necessarily for, to, to consider moving as a recruiter. So I, it's interesting that your answer is very similar to when I answer that question, which is there are good, good like pockets in every sector who'd have thought rec to rec would be doing okay at the moment and for now we're doing yeah. okay so i think it's relative so this has been so useful and we haven't we've not needed to talk numbers which is good because i'm i'm not a numbers girl at all i'm a sales girl so that's absolutely brilliant and of course if anyone who's watching this has got any questions or wants any further advice helen's contact information will be on there on spotify on youtube and all over our social media thank you so much for joining me today Thank you. It's been wonderful. Yeah, I really appreciate it. No, it's been wonderful. Thank you so much, Helen. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Bye-bye.